Hello, and welcome to Hugelow TV. This is Saturday, April 14th, 2018. Today we have the pleasure of uh, hearing Jim Charles' channel for us. Uh, we'll start with some announcements and blessings. And uh, the first announcement, I'd like to remind people that the Third Ascension Workshop will be again in Dansville, New York this August, August 16th to the 21st. You can see more information about that at hucolo.org. And Will, if you could step up and tell us about some of the workshops you're going to be uh, offering soon, I'd appreciate uh, you let folks know. No, 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 we're good. We're good. So today, um, Wendy and I are putting on uh, an angelic awakening class, Arise All Angels. Um, and that's at 4 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Central. And it's $111. Email reikiwithwill at gmail.com. And what we're going to do is we're going to channel archangels, angels, angelic collectives, the seraphim, and the holy fire who will awaken and attune, excite and enliven, as well as inspire and ignite all attendees, attendees with blessings of enlightenment and remembrance of one's gifts and abilities. And again, that's today at uh, 4 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Central. And in, is it two weeks? Um, April 29th, where Jim and Wendy and I are holding the white magic class at 3 p.m. Eastern. And Spirit said that that's the day that they wanted it. So uh, email me, reikiwithwill at gmail.com if you're interested in the white magic class. Tika no ratara, tikiho ota or shishi o haya. All right. Thank you, Will. I'm sorry, I forgot to start with introductions. In the uh, Hangout, we have Carrie, Christine, uh, Sheer, Steve, and myself, Mark. And uh, Jim, would you like to introduce the people in the room with you? Uh, yes, there's Angie and Barbara and Will. I think that's it. That's it. Okay. We have a, uh, I, there's a lot of weather problems going on today. And uh, Mark is upstairs, so he's actually in our class, in our area too. So, <laughs> and ignore the man behind the curtain. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Did you guys talk about the workshop in August? Yes, we did. We Martin. did that already. Right. And details are at hucolo.org for anybody who wants to sign up. Very All good. right, then. Uh, who would like to share a blessing? Uh, should we start with blessings in the room? Anyone? Of course. Will will do a blessing. Anybody out there in TV land? Well, okay, well, why don't you start? And if somebody feels moved, we'll bring them in at the end. Okay. As we continue to reach out to you throughout the galaxy and the universe, we see that there is more acceptance now than there has been before, and we are so grateful that you are here with us in spirit. We are supporting you in many different ways and will continue to do so throughout your ascension period and beyond. We are so willing and will be happy to make first contact whenever that is able to happen. Much love to you, and we continue to send our prayers to you consistently and continually. Can I try one? Sure. Okay, it's my first time, so. Thank you. Thank you for listening to us. We wish you great love and blessings, prayers, and continual rising. 
We are with you in your energies to rise and to accept all things of great community and beautiful God natures. Wonderful. Nice. Uh, let's see. Uh, I'm going to review the requests for people to bring in today. We have Mitza Einstein and the Council of Wonders. Are there any other requests? Uh, Nivi asked me to ask for Saint Germain. Saint Germain? Mm -hmm. okay. uh, I have a request if it's not too late. No, it's not too late. Uh, I was wondering if we could bring uh, Grindel forward. <laughs> All you have to do is mention his name, and he'll be in line. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't heard from him in so long, so. Okay. All right. Uh, Christine, did you want to do a short blessing before we move into the session? You know, the I don't know a galactic language. I just know blessed be. Mm -hmm. Also, Anki was also requested. Okay. Early. You ready to go into meditation, Jim? Um, I'm ready to go into meditation mode. Everyone have a wonderful day. Um, much love to you all. And um, I know that Elijah is coming first, but then your requests will be honored, I'm sure. Uh, but he, I'm not sure what he has to say today. But because um, I asked him and he told me to mind my own business. So... <laughs> <laughs> He's a, um, he doesn't like it when I interfere with his thought processes. So uh, he is uh, he's coming. He he did it very politely, and not not in a nasty way, but um, he is here with us today, and uh, he will be first. All right. Have a great session, everybody, and I hope uh, you have a lot of really good questions. All right. Much love to you. Oh, don't forget the book is out, and. Uh, From the Galaxy with Love is out. I don't know how many got your copies of that yet, but I still haven't read it yet but and don't know what it's about. But I'm sure it's okay. So, all right. Much love to you. Greetings, I am Elijah. Welcome. I have a very short message today, but I wanted to direct my attentions to all of you who are dreamers and have very high hopes of the future and very good intentions and very uh, positive ideas about what your missions are and how to accomplish the things that you need to accomplish. This is a difficult time for dreamers to continue dreaming because many times it would seem like the energies are against you or that there is something around you that is not adding up with what you want to do for the future. But let me tell you this. There are many dreams coming down from God and being given to many. Missions that seem like dreams, visions that seem like they cannot possibly be true, thought processes that seem far above the normal or average. And you say, that can't be possible. It just can't be true because I don't know how that is possible. Remember with God that all things are possible and do not let your dreams fall aside. 
Do not let them be squelched because you don't have the faith to believe in them. But remember, they must be for a positive good and not just for personal gain, but for the gain of others as well. Most always, God will give you great gifts and great understandings when he knows that you are going to use them for great good in the world. I see and feel the energies of most of you out there. And I know that you have dreams, visions, missions, and understandings. And sometimes you wonder, when is this going to happen? How is it going to happen? Is it really true that it's going to happen? Do not let go of these dreams and visions. Do not let go of your heartfelt needs for giving to the world, for contributing to God's work. For you are his hands, his legs, and his voice on this planet. You must be all the parts of him that no one can see outright, but can feel and know that he exists. So be his arms and legs, his mouth, his hands, his truth. And let those visions burn inside of you and whelm up and bring thanksgiving to them. Bring reality to them from the other side of the universe, from the other side of your from your thought processes. Thank God for these things that you know that you must do, that you know that are things that will help God's work. Now, they may come not come to, to fruition the exact way that you envision, because God works in very mysterious ways. And sometimes it may appear that he is not working in that area at all, at all and poof, there it is. This has happened to many of you, I know. You turn a corner and there's something smacking you down and knocking you away from what you feel is your proper route, your proper vision. And many things come and affect the way you feel or you think. And it is not a positive endeavor anymore. But guess what? There will be those energies that try to make your dreams impossible. But never with God is there anything impossible. Move forward. If you are to be a healer, use your hands, your energy, the universe, all the entities, all the divinities to help you with what you are to do. If you are to be a speaker, do that with all of your heart. If you are be a builder of great machines for God, if you are to be a lover of people and an, an example to the world, that is what you should be. You should not let anything tear your dreams away from you. Because who is to say that God is not the actual genesis of those dreams? Remember. Your visions, your dreams, your understandings are still there. Do not let anyone put them down. Do not let anyone tell you that you cannot be something that you know God has put into your heart. Let yourself be lifted. Let your dreams fly. Let your heart be light. And let the world pass in front of you and let you just go forward in your thought processes. And you may say, how, how, how? But you do not even need to ask that with God. Just do, do, do with your meditations, with your praise and thanksgiving, with your unceasing prayers. Go forward and let your doubts pass. For you are needed in this day and age. 
You are the light of the world. You are the way, the path that he is part of as well. Like I said, you are the eyes, the voice, the arms, the legs, the hands. You are the body of God. And whatever part he needs for you to use, let him use that. Let him have full government of your system because he will make your life even greater and more joyful than you can imagine. He will make your life a, a visionary, a spectacular thing if you allow it. Many people say that they are allowing God to do these things, but they are actually saying it with their voice and putting it down with their attitudes and the things they say um, in their own private lives. Do not be one of those that shouts glory, glory, and then in your own heart says, I don't believe it. Do not be that kind of person, but be the example of all the things that God means to you in your life. He is part of your soul, part of your creativity, part of all those things that are meant to flourish within you and in the world. Do you mean to tell me you think that it's only you that is these creations, that these talents are? Do you, it's only you, and, and that is why it's so limited, because you can expand all of these things. Let God take control of them. They will be greater than you could possibly imagine. Do you believe that your channeling is not so good? Do you believe that your healing is not so powerful? Do you believe that your thoughts are not so great? Give them over to God because if he wants to use them, they will be greater than you could ever possibly imagine. Remember, your visions, your thoughts, your deeds, your understandings, your motives, your desires, place them in God's hands and he will mold you the way that will make you the happiest person. You may have dreams that you have formulated that guess what? May not be in his light, may not be in his purpose, may not be the things that he wants for you, and they would only lead you to unhappiness. But he will take all those things that he knows that are joyful for you, and those things that will make your life worthwhile and beneficial and fulfilled. Oh, what a good word. Fulfilled. God is part of that. So give everything over. You know, it's very hard to do that in the third dimension. I was in the third dimension, and I know how difficult it was to follow the words of God, even when he spoke directly. Because it was like, how is that possible? How can I do that? The people are not listening. You want me to go up and make a fool of myself? You want me to bring down fire? How can I do that without your help? And, and how do I know that that will even happen? But when God speaks, and when God is telling you the truth, and that you know that he is, it will happen. It will happen. There are things, there are dreams and understandings out there that are beyond what you can possibly think of, but they will happen. If it is God's divine will for you, it will happen. Do not put your doubts and fears on it because it will happen. There may be things that block your view, block your vision and block your way sometimes, but it will Happen, ask God to clear your way. Did he not say, I am the way, the truth, and the light? That was a words of Jesus in his time. He is the way, the truth, and the light in many ways. 
in many ways. Do not take it out of context. The way, the truth, and the life cannot be altered in your rationale. You must accept it for how it is spoken and how it is meant. There are those of you that try to battle God because you want your things, your ways, your life to be the way you want it to be. But guess what? He wants you to be happy. Do you think God wants you to be miserable? Do you think God wants you to have a life of uh, uselessness and unhappiness? No. He does not wish that at all. So look inside. Do an internal thought process. Let it be known that he is there and even if you don't feel him this minute or within the next 10 days or 10 years, he is there whether you feel him or not, and he will come through whether you feel like he is there or not. God is not a feeling. God is an energy that works with you. Mother Teresa really never felt God. She writes about it. She says, I never really felt him, but I know he's there. I see his work. But I never feel him with me. I never feel that God is here. I feel alone in my life. But yet I see that he is working. I see that he has done things through me that I cannot take credit for. Let your obedience and your prayers move you forward. Even though you don't feel God, he is there working with you. And Mother Teresa helped so many people. Why? Because she knew God was there, even though she did not feel his presence. She could see his vision. She could know his work was being done. She could move forward courageously because he was working with her and she could not deny it. Dreamers. Dreamers, all of you, do not lose the dream. Do not lose your thoughts about the future. Do not step aside and let others take over what you need to be doing. Be a leader if you must. Be a follower if you must. Because following is a great teacher for the leaders. You must be a good follower before you can be a great leader. You must know what it is to be a follower and how to treat your followers in order to lead them in a positive way. For if you don't understand their position and how they feel, how are you to bring great understanding and motivation to them? Yes, some of you are called to be followers first and then leaders. But that is not against the dream. That is not against the dream. It is the prelude to the dream, the stepping into the cinematic colors. 
the beauty of stepping into another place of thought. Prepare yourself. Dreamers prepare. For you have things to do. You have things to do. It is a violent world in places. It is very negative out there sometimes. But you are to be the light of God and shine the light through the negativity, through all that is to be um, taken care of. And you will get through it much easier with God's help. Even though you don't feel him, he will give you the understanding that he is working. Have faith, my children. Have faith. Your time is yet to come. My time is yet to come. But I know God is with me. I know that he stands by me. I know that these words are true. I have asked him to give me the message for today, and I did not really have the message until now. But God works, and this is how he works. Sometimes he does not tell you ahead of time what's to be said. But when you are faced with that moment that you must speak, the words come. Blessed be to God. Praise to God for his greatness, his omniscience, and all the, the love that he grants to us, if we allow it. And I know you're saying, oh yes, there are some stories where uh, God has not been so good with people. Look at Job. You're only looking at the negative portion. But after the Job has come through all this trouble, what happens? He is fulfilled a hundred times over what he had before because he was faithful to God. Did he feel God when he was going through this negativity? No. Did he know that God was with him? Yes because he did not lose his faith. He continued to push forward, even though everything looked desolate, and his friends all told him to curse God and die. But he would not do it, because he knew the truth. So know the truth. And you will be blessed for it. You may have to go through a time of desolation. You may have, to, may have to go through a time of trouble. But guess what? You will be blessed for that. You will be. Do not turn away. Set your, set your beacon forward. Shine your light. Help as many as you can. Be what you are in God at this time. Rise up as high as you can in God at this time. Do not be meek. Do not be shallow. But fill yourself with light. Fill yourself with love and honor and courage. For this is a time of courage. This is a time of enlightenment. This is a time of great truth. This is a time where you are the beacon. Blessings to you, my children. I have no more to say except for let God be. Thank you, Elisha. That was very inspiring and encouraging. Are you uh, interested in entertaining questions today? Are there any questions? If so, I will entertain them. 
Um, there's a question from the YouTube chat from Lilypad. She wants to know if Samuel the prophet is trying to tell her messages. Samuel the prophet, all the prophets from the past are trying to come through now in some way, if they are in spirit. There are many of the prophets that are not in spirit. There are some that are incarnate in the, the world at this time. But yes, let the prophets come through you if they are wanting to speak. If they have a message for the world, let them come through. Absolutely. David, would you like to ask your question? Hello, Elijah. Greetings. Yes, I've um, been sending healing to the mermaids, <clears throat> and I was thinking of going to see them before they left, and I'm just having difficulties feeling like I should go, yet I'm still having signs like I had a friend whose name means mermaid and I kind of want to go but I don't have a strong really strong desire because everyone's telling me to go in my heart and see how you feel to decide on doing it um, and then there was another first uh, aspect of going for Portugal that there may be something in Portugal but I don't know anything about Portugal so I'm having trouble in the aspect of having the, the finances to have everything work out after I get there to have enough money to have a place to live and it seems like a tough decision. All these doubts and fears you must put aside. This is what I have you look at. Talk to God about what is there for you. Feel that your dream is true or feel that it is not. Is it important to gaze upon the mermaids at this time? They're very ill, and they will be going back to their planet very soon because they cannot stay here any long with the pollution and with the negativity that is here. They must go. But let me tell you this. Sending them healing, is that something you should do? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Spending money to go to Portugal and spending time to just look upon them, is that worthwhile? Or is the healing more worthwhile? You must find out from God and in your heart what resonates with you. Because the truth is, no one can tell you the truth about this situation except for God. I cannot lay upon you the truth because it is in God's eyes that you are trying to do these things. You must listen to his voice. You must feel his conjecture and must know his stability in order to know whether you are to go or not. And the finances are not a problem if this is what he will have you do. If Portugal has something for you, then it will become definite in your heart that you must go. There is no doubts with God. He is true and he will speak to you directly and he is firm. And he will make his truth known to you if you wish it. But remember, you must indulge yourself in prayer. You must find the time to pray. Ask God for the truth. Ask him, what is it that you want from me? And not just float around and think about it. But you must dedicate some time to this to know what he wants for you. Have you done that yet? A little bit. A I little know. bit. But not enough to know for sure. Because I hear all that doubt in your voice. Yes. So, so bring it into your heart. He loves you very much. He wants you to do the right thing. There are many things on your horizon right now that you feel that you need to do. And you're not sure how, the, how these things can be done. But God does. So you must consult him directly. Just like Mother Teresa, she could not feel him, but she could tell what the truth was. And she moved forward boldly when she did know it. So when you know the truth, move forward. Okay. I love you. Bring your love for God in 
directly into your heart and let him be your guide here. No one else can tell you what to do. And and how is the, the energy helping them? Is it helping them sustain that I'm saying? Absolutely. Until they leave, all healing energy sent to the mermaids will help them to heal and sustain, sustain, but they must go back to their planet. This is what God wants for them. Can you guide me real quick with the, with the toning? Uh, it's kind of new to me to do the toning, uh, that this will help them. Is there anything? Yes, the toning will help. Just bring yourself into alignment with God and let your toning go. It is not a matter of instruction at this point. You're sending healing. So do it with God's natural ability. Okay. Thank you. Much love. You're welcome. We have one more question from the YouTube chat. Lydie would like to know, is there another prayer you can give us to use other than the Lord's Prayer that is effective when doing spiritual or psychic work? There are all kinds of prayers that you can use, my dear. There are all kinds of spiritual understandings. If you have a light language or a prayer language, let that language speak for you and pray for you the words that you do not know how to say. Let a light language speak for you. And if you don't have a light language, just ask God to bring you the information, the understanding, and the love you need to move forward. You do not need special prayers for God's work to be done. You need a connection to him and a trust in him. And that's all you really need. And if you don't have a light language, perhaps you can gain one just by looking to the heavens and bringing God's understanding to you and just use whatever means possible to connect to the truth about your life. Remember, you don't need special words. You just need a pure heart and a pure love for God. And then you can move forward. You do not need anything else. And if you don't have those things, all that you need to do is ask God to help you, ask God to forgive you, ask God to edify you, build you up. Whatever it is, it's very simple. God listens very carefully. Do not doubt. I think that concludes the questions. Um, is there somebody else waiting in the wings? Mm, I do not believe so. I will take my leave and bring someone else in, unless there's someone else uh, wanting to, to ask a question. But I will take my leave, and you may bring someone else. Thank you so Thank much. You so much. You're welcome. Much love and many blessings to all of you. Remember, your dreams are important. Your dreams are important. Whether you think that they are able to be had or not, put them, put them in God's hands and let him deal with them. Much love.
Someone requested the Council of Wonders. Welcome. Someone requested some maybe clarity. Cheer, would you like to ask a question? Sir? Hello, how are you? I am always well. I or at least I try to be. <laughs> Well, I heard many great things about your console. I do know that my galactic brother is working with you or in cooperation with you. And I was wondering if you can expand on your work and how you work on planet Earth. There's some of our work that we cannot talk about on planet Earth because it is yet not yet to be revealed to you. It is to be revealed at the proper times. And the energies that we are putting into your planet are sometimes not to be talked about, but to be, to be used in positive ways and to build up certain thought processes and certain plans that we have. But yes, there are those of us that are working amongst you in several different ways. We have humans that are working with us. We have aliens that are working with us. And it is God's will that we uh, do what we do. Amok is with us, as you have already gathered. And we are working steadily to create a greater existence for your planet. I see. Can you tell us about, like, do you work all around the universe? Do you work only in the galaxy? Oh, no. We work many places. We work where we are needed. As we had started, we were not working with this planet at the beginning. And we were, and the, the Council of Wonders is only a name that your people give us. We have other names throughout the universe. But we did not originally start here with your planet, but we started far away in many other places to bring peace to areas of the, of the galaxy and the universe that were having trouble with that. And we see that you have trouble with peace on your planet. There are rumors of war, and there's attacks even going on right now. So we need to help build a greater peace on your planet. Thank you. You are welcome. I know that you are aware of us through, through Amok and through others that work with us directly. And we would love for them to speak about us as well, but only what is necessary to be spoken. But they have great missions, and they are doing great work with us. Are there any other questions? I just came to clarify that we are here, that we are doing some very good work, that we are doing some secretive work. Not that it's, we want to, I, I don't like to call it secretive. But I do like to say that it is work that must be done in a way that is uh, just aware of, to the people that are doing it. Because you do not want to announce what you are doing to the entire world, lest interference comes to stop it. So, not that it's secret, but it is that it should not be revealed so that it could go and move forward as possible positively as possible as you can understand yes um can you tell a little bit about the group are you um an alien oriented are there multiple people uh how many uh, can you tell us a little bit just about the group it it varies in member size it started um a couple millennia ago um, in in a galaxy far away as you might gather and we are 
it's it does not it has many different species in it yes there are humans as a part of it as well and the reason for its varying size is there's sometimes more than one representative from a, a planet or there could be uh, those that drop out and those that want to join and we pick up our members in a very unusual way we we find those that are wanting to work with us that can leave their planets for a, a great deal of time and can live in their own dimensional thought process uh, with us but we do move throughout the universe quite easily but right now we're stationed in your solar system uh, for the purpose of many different projects that are going on here. Now, there are members of the Council of Wonders that are not here, that are other places in the universe, other places doing other things that they need to do. They are on missions, if you will, in other galaxies, other planets, and uh, doing other work in other places. They are needed there. And the people that are needed here are here. So the actual bulk of the council is here, but actually there are some that are missing. Thank you very much. If that answers your question. Absolutely. Very well. I, so I cannot give a number to the council because uh, it, it manages to change um, quite a lot. People will have to go back to their planets and live out the rest of their missions there. But part of their mission was with us. And so we are one of the councils that allow for free will and the movement between worlds and, the, and for families and things of this nature. But we work very well in doing what we do and helping in the way that we help because those that volunteer to help are truly dedicated to what is necessarily needed to be done. And they are called by God to be with us so that we may know that they are ready for the, their missions that are coming. We all have our missions, and some of them are in leadership positions. Some of them are on the planet, and some of them are in other places altogether that you may not even be aware of. But we do have integrity. We do have honesty. We do have uh, purity on our side. In many cases, we try not to be dissuaded by negativity, try not to uh, uh, be a part of anything that would, that would have a negative outcome. Um, from what I know, your uh, your work is also about protecting uh, magical relics and. Oh well, yeah, absolutely yes. We yeah. have we have in our possession about um, nine hundred uh, very very powerful relics throughout the universe, actually, and nine hundred very powerful ones, and another thousand not so powerful but still uh useful relics and we do gather them to keep them out of negativity's hands and we do use them if we know how to use them properly and if it, it is god's will for us to use them properly so yes and you're talking about perhaps thor's hammer and things of that nature uh, yes, do you also protect the Ark of the Covenant? We do. We know where it's at. It is on the earth and it is protected by some of our people. And do you know all the different items within the Ark of the Covenant? Because some know about some of the artifacts and there's a lot of uh, question marks about what it is contained, actually. Yes, the, the tablets of the Ten Commandments, there's a crown, there's a scepter, 
There's uh, the things that were made of gold that had to be taken away from the people, but not destroyed because there were, uh, if it were destroyed, then the spirits of negativity that were inside of them would escape. And so they, they imprisoned them in the Ark of the Covenant, uh, Ark of the Covenant in certain golden apparatuses and um, things that the people made and put spirits in them that they worshipped and they were negative. So in the Ark of the Covenant, there's many different things, actually. It's much larger than you might imagine. Well, the, the, the size of it is actually given in the Bible, but the inside of it is like um, uh, sort of a magical internal size because the inside is actually larger than the outside. Mm. That I didn't know. Thank you. You're welcome. For in order to hold what it holds, it had to be in another dimension almost. So. God created um, a very inter interesting uh, in, insides to the Ark of the Covenant. After it was created, of course. The outside of it remains radioactive at this point. He did that for protection so that people would not get close to it. Or if they, do, if they did, they would be harmed. So he wanted to keep as many people away from it as possible because um, it is not something for humans to handle any longer. There are a few more questions from the uh, YouTube chat. Uh, one asks, is the covenant a sort of portal? It is. That's a very good, a very good a way to say it because inside is larger than the outside and can uh, be, can, uh, things can be uh, sent to God's realm if he needs needs it to be. Another question uh, asks if the actions of the White House are aiding or abetting humanity's ascension process. That is a question uh, that is both yes and no. It would appear at this time that there is a lot of uh, confusion around, about the actual actions that are being taken. And they seem very negative. And they seem very, they seem like they are not going to uh, help anything in ascension. However, there are things being fought with this negativity it seems like it's a negative action, but negativity is also being fought with this negative action. So uh, two negatives sort of make a positive in this scenario, if you know what I'm talking about. I really can't go into it. There are some things around these actions that are not to be revealed because that would harm the, the positive people that are doing work there. Okay, we have a few more questions. Christine, would you like to go next? Yes, I would. Um, how can I address you as the Council of Wonder or? My name is Helia. Greetings, Helia. Um, I was wondering, um, I have written a story um, about relic hunters in the galaxy. And I was wondering if I channeled that because... Yes, it's very possible. There is more than one group that collects relics. There are millions of relics, actually. Some of them not so powerful and some of them very powerful. But um, the most powerful relics, there are, there are only three relics on the Earth that were really very powerful as far as life uh, threatening or changing and I won't tell you what they are but there are three that we have from the earth there's still actually one on the earth that is very very powerful that no one can get close to 
And of course, the Ark of the Covenant, I would not consider that a relic, really, but it is a very, very powerful item. Then, and it, it really cannot be possessed. It's actually a possession of God. And so the Ark of the Covenant cannot be possessed by any relic hunters. <laughs> um, I just heard on um, our National Geo um, that there's um, a temple in India where the eighth door is supposed to be, um, they, they are unable to open. Is that one of the places you're protecting? Yes. Okay. <laughs> That's really neat. Thank um, you. <laughs> there are several places on your planet that need protection and guidance. We can protect them from off planet. We do not have to have armed guards there or whatever. But with the Ark of the Covenant, it is in a self-contained area with guards. Well, I think the radioactive is enough to <laughs> yes. disappoint uh, a lot of... But we have an eye on many places on your planet that are very important. And um, there are other planets also that have very important places that need protected as well. You are not the only planet that we are protecting. There are at least 80 planets that have relics on them still that we are protecting. Is the Sphinx another one that you're protecting? There are things under the Sphinx that we are protecting. Yes. Not the Sphinx itself. The Sphinx itself is of no consequence. But uh -huh. the things under the Sphinx need protectors. Does my writer's imagination a lot of good? It just sparks it. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you. You're welcome. Sorry, my computer crashed. I'm back. Uh, Very well. We have a few more questions in the chat. David Waller would like to know what the powers of Thor's hammer are. Well, you can imagine that the powers of Thor's hammer are. Uh, very physical he is able to uh destroy many things with it and so we have it now he does exist still but he has given it to us for protection and we will give it back to him if he needs it for work in the future but right now it is not necessary it only works in third dimension so um and that is an interesting factoid for you is that Thor's hammer, although well, seems like it is interdimensional, only works in third dimensional uh, third dimensional areas at this time, and was made for third dimension. He had it uh, made especially for his time on Earth, and it does shoot lightning. It it can destroy from a distance. It has uh, other properties that we do not want to go into, but. Yes, it can. Uh, if you use it, it can break open the Earth's crust. It can um, just break open mountains. It can do many uh, very harmful things. But he used it in a way that uh, was not recorded properly. So we will not go into that right now. Okay, I believe Dave has the next question. Yes. Hello. Greetings. Yes. Um, actually, my question was about Thor's hammer as well, because there's a lot of people wondering about that since it's in our main, mainstream media. Yes. Uh, but I have another question. My, uh, my research is about uh, hybrids on planet Earth. And, yes. Uh, I was wondering if you could comment on the tendon, the palmaris longus tendon right here. Yes. Uh, they say that 13 to 15 percent of the population doesn't have this tendon and that it's a saurian trait because it was used for climbing and holding on to branches. Can Correct. you comment a little bit on uh, traits of saurians, hybrids? On the saurian, they're very, in, like you said, they're, but the saurians are un, uh, they're not as well recorded about them. 
as you can understand. There's a lot of things about the Saurians that uh, remain unknown to your people. We we have a planet of Saurians uh, out in uh, the Andromeda area. So, but they are reptilian, of course. Uh, they have many traits of the draconians but they are not draconians uh but they have some of their traits they they can be winged hmm. and they can climb uh, uh very steep angles and they can uh be seen as almost pterodactyl like at times this but that's only one version of the saurians there are a few different kinds of saurians on the planet just like there was a few different kinds of reptilians there are different kinds of saurians also so you have another question <laughs> yes yeah, sorry um are these pterosaurians that you're talking about yes okay and um so it's my understanding that they have um hybridized humans and saurians together for disclosure in the future and all that. They're not um, on this planet, though. Pardon me? They're not on this planet. Okay, so there's a woman, and um, she is called the Reptilian Hybrid Housewife, and yes. um, she's, like, spearheading disclosure of Saurians, and she shows her eye and the palmaris longus tendon as well. And I was just wondering, like, she says in her book that true troodon is a species of raptor, I believe. Yes. And she said that was her progenitor, like, yes. she was a species that she evolved from. Now, she may be the only one on your planet that is actually active. Uh, if there are those on your planet, they are subterranean at this time, and she is wanting to reintroduce them to the, the planet's surface. Now this may be difficult to do because they would not be very well accepted yet. Not until first contact uh, because they would be seen as a, as a predator. And they would be seen as dangerous because she does admit that they were predators. So, and they still have that predatory activity in, in their instincts. So I understand what she's trying to do, but it's, it's going to be very difficult for her to do that. Okay. That's all I have. Thank you very much. Very well. Very well. David is next. Yes. Hello. Hello. Hi. I am uh, curious about the possibility of working with you and what kind of things you have to have to be a part of your group. First of all, you have to have a desire to, for a particular mission. There are certain missions that come to people's thought processes that we become aware of. God lets us know where they are and what they are doing. And we uh, contact them and ask them if they would like to do it as a uh, with our help. Now, remember, our group is is limited in number, but only those that are truly able and willing to do the the missions that they that are brought to them uh, will we bring aboard because if they do not have the truest of nature or the abilities to do them we cannot really take a chance on them so please uh, if you do have a, a mission that you feel is beyond uh, Earth in some ways, in, in the se in the sense that you cannot do it without other help. Then we are listening, basically, basically, and God is letting us know who is out there. We do find them through so many different kinds of sources, and it's interesting that um, we do find them and and uh, they are able to work with us. So okay. keep, keep positive thought process on that. You don't know, according to what we feel on you now, you're not sure of your full mission. Yeah, I have, a, I have an idea. It's some amazing stuff, though. Yes. 
but you have to be a little bit more aware. You have there's things that have to happen before you can be used for that mission fully. So you are not quite prepared yet for to be with us. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. That is all right though. That is not to say anything negative at all. Right. Hi again. It's. I'm oh, sorry. Do you have? Uh... Should I? Is there uh, a point where I would speak to you in private or talk to you at some later? Would there be any point in that? Or, or call just the wait? Council of Wonders to your meditation. We will speak to you. Okay. Thank you. Much love. You're welcome. Much love to you. Anyone can call the Council of Wonders to their meditation. If we choose to speak to you, that is up to us. Uh, if it is necessary for us to speak to you, we will come to your meditation. And some have found us in their meditation on your planet. Uh, they did not know who we were until we introduced ourselves. And we don't actually introduce ourselves to as the Council of Wonders do. We just uh, introduce ourselves usually as a galactic uh, council that would like to talk to you about your mission. Because the Council of Wonders is just a name and it has nothing to do with actually what we do in, in individual cases. Does that make sense to you? It's just a pretty name. Uh, All right. Yes. I have a couple of more questions, if yeah. you're up to it. Yeah. Um, first of all, you say that the Ark of the Covenant came from God or the El Collectives? Who created it? It was a combination. God, set, God had the El Collectives make it, of course, but it belongs to God. It is his, his, it is, uh, his merchandise. I see. And... Uh, Solomon Ring and Aaron Staff is also something that came from the L Collectives or from a, a species? The Ring did, yes. The Staff, uh, there's questions about where the Staff came from. The Ring definitely came from beyond your world. It had supernatural powers. It is definitely in the Ark of the Covenant and it is so dangerously powerful it it can um, manifest pretty much whatever you would want uh, to be manifested positive That's negative whatever as long as you uh, if you said it the right way it would it would manifest there was a certain way to say things it had a magic uh, you had to uh, say certain things for it to activate, but after it was activated, your request would be granted. But the activation was a spell, if you wish to call it that. It was several different lines that uh, people, uh, that only Solomon pretty much knew, because he was the only one from Earth given that information. I see, and it could actually manifest matter from nothing? Yes, it can wow. manifest matter from nothing. Or bring matter from long, long distances from other galaxies to your planet. I see. And can you tell me about the abilities of Aaron's staff? Aaron's staff was, um, it was also Moses' staff. Moses' staff had transmutable abilities did you know that it could turn into different things it could turn into a snake it could turn into it, it could enlarge and it could uh send out energy pulses it was very powerful as well but it was not nearly as powerful as the ring but it it was limited in its power but still a great deal of power it was tr it was a transmutable um, scepter. I see. And the source of the power is magic or technology? 
Part of it is magic. The scepter did not need a spell to, to work, but it needed the identity of its owner to work. It, it would only work for Moses, and it would only work for Solomon. So if David was not permitted to have it. I see. And it, it went many generations without being used or touched because it was too dangerous for some people to use. Uh, David was one of those people. He was, uh, as you can see with his relationship with Bathsheba, he was a little bit of... Uh, too jumpy and too uh, eccentric in some ways to be able to have the staff. He could have, uh, he, uh, he did what he wanted and he was impulsive. He was too impulsive, that's the word. I see, and uh, David asked if uh, the Thor's hammer also activated by uh, DNA? The Thor's hammer also activated by ownership. And Will the staff of Aaron slash Moses will be retrieved to their owners if they will be reincarnated? Correct. So they could ask for it. What? You said that Thor can get his hammer back. Yes, he can. I'm wondering about the staff, if that the situation with Moses and Aaron. There is... Uh... I imagine it's true, but I would have to, you would have to talk to God about that. He is in control of who possesses it at this time. I could not tell you, I only know the some information about it. I do not know if God is willing to give it to anyone at this time or not, uh, but that would be something for you to talk to God about or uh, divinities about because they are under, it is under their control at this time. I see. Thank you very, very much. You're welcome. Does that also work with the ring as well? Yes. The, since the ring and the staff are in the Ark of the Covenant, that is under God's control. So I think they are deemed too dangerous to be used at this time. Plus, the. Um, the ring was so extremely powerful. It's one of the relics that uh, <coughs> would be considered uh, one of the top hundred relics in the universe. Mo hundred most powerful. And Thor's hammer is not even in that. Is there any more questions? Um, the most recent one in the YouTube chat is asking when you refer to God, if you're also referring to the being Sanat Kumara. God has many names. We just use God because that is the English word that is used most often. You can use Allah, Ra, uh, many, many, many names. Uh, Krishna, uh, Buddha, well, well, Buddha wasn't a god, really, but he had god-like uh, thought processes. They, god gave him uh, some divine thought processes. But um, the thing is, yes, he goes by very many, many names and has uh, put his energies into many different uh, beings so that works could be done that can only be done in as an incarnation. Thank you. Um, there's a lot of questions in the chat. I don't think we're going to get to them all. Uh, somebody asked about the Jesserian seers and their studies on extrasensory abilities, and if you had any um, basic information about those folks. A little bit. We do have one of them working with us. And the seers help us to know the future a bit because they can uh, see the probable outcome from a certain now. Does that make sense to you? And that being said, we can look a day or two ahead of time with these seers and know that 
it is safe to move into certain areas or safe to do certain things uh, so that our missions can be more successful. So this is something that we do use in a positive way to um, to help our missions. We do have uh, them working with us, but not always. They they do not always volunteer, but they they ask for the mission and they what we we're trying to do first, and they pray about it. And if if they feel that we are it is necessary, uh, they will help us. Okay, next I believe we have Sheer. Yes. Um, you said that Solomon Ring is probably in the top 100 most powerful relics? In, in the universe as we know it. Can you tell me about the number one? It's not an earthly relic. It is a, a necklace. Uh, or it looks like a necklace, but it, you wouldn't really, it really wouldn't be a necklace. It weighs about 150 pounds. It's from a giant species, and it uh, does uh, also transmute and d does many things. However, it's set for such a high power range because they are a species of giants that it can actually destroy worlds. The, the ring cannot do that. The and ring can bring things, but this is the only relic that we know of that can actually crumble planets. And, um, and uh, so it is actually not in possession by any particular species at this time. We know where it's at, but it is hidden and it is safe at this time. We're just protecting its area. Even we cannot be trusted with such a powerful relic. Just to be around it, you can feel the energy and you can, you can um, become, actually have superhuman energies transferred to you from it with just a thought process. So we have it in a place where it's uh, behind many barriers and many um it's it's just uh, a place that we cannot reveal to you and it's not on your your planet it's actually not even in this galaxy can you tell me like who gave it to them or did they create it it, it, was, a, it was a long extinct species now uh they've been extinct for at least a thousand five hundred years something like that but they they actually uh, were so powerful that they destroyed themselves. They they absolute power just uh, you know corrupts absolutely. But they were starting to reach a point where it was um, they were fighting between themselves for the power, uh, and they were and they destroyed their planet. It actually crumbled under the under the under the use of this particular chain or necklace if you want to call it and that we found the uh found the necklace or chain floating in in the debris now it was so powerful that uh many species were drawn to it but their craft as it got close to them it it drew the craft in but it actually destroyed some of the crafts because uh, they were of neg negative uh, origin, negative uh, negative uh, thought processes. And so it, when it reaches into a negative thought process, it will grant their negativity and uh, it actually destroyed some of those ships. So what they what we did was put a barrier around it and took it to a very large planetoid and buried it about a thousand miles under the, the surface. Can you tell me the name of the object? Uh, it was, well, in English, it was uh, called the, the Lynx of Eternity. I think, 
that would translate properly links to eternity i think it's called can you tell me what density was the race this that will be my last question like that are, they were a fifth dimensional species wow okay thank you very much <laughs> temple beautiful you're next hi hi um, <laughs> my question <clears throat> and uh, I want to keep uh, names sort of private, so I'm sorry for that. Um, I have a person who recently came into my life, and I'm wondering if he is the person who I remember him to be. If you could answer that. If you remember him to be from a past life? Yeah. Yes. Okay. And so um, is it time then for this next mission to start? That I do not know. Hold on one moment, please. You, they're telling me that you know the answer to that question already. Yeah. Okay, I thought they would say that. Um, okay, that, that is my question. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, we have one more question from the YouTube chat. Uh, somebody would like to know what happened to the Druids and uh, do you know anything about their relics? The Druid relics uh, went with them when they left the planet, but they were also in Atlantis. The Druids were part of the Atlantean culture also. I don't know if a lot of people know that there were some Druids that did exist in the Atlantean culture. They were very, they had a, a great, a, a knowledge of magic, a great energy for uh, positivity and and also negativity. They had uh, the Stonehenge is one of their, uh, I know that they say the Druids were around when Stonehenge was made and it wasn't them, but they know how it was made and gained much information and power from the very making of it. And the and the beings that actually helped them uh, in that era, I won't say that the beings were uh, helping the druids directly because they they were actually indirectly helping them. But they the energy that these beings had uh, did transfer to the druid people, and they were able to use that energy in a very interesting way. Now. The Druid relics are have left with them. There is a Druid relic that is very powerful, and it is uh, the Stone of Goleman, and no one knows about it. It is a crystal that they had when they were in the uh, Atlantean uh, era as well, and it was a very powerful uh, stone. It was like a crystal that you could read look into the future with and look into the past and um they were able to gain lots of information from this crystal it was actually blessed uh, by zeus or someone or uh, it was supposedly be was blessed by s some other gods that were eternal and given to them as a gift because they had saved uh one of the uh an elemental that was very dear to one of the uh, great gods of uh, heart. So they were given this gift of this crystal. But the rest of them are, uh, we have a couple of their relics as well. So also Stonehenge is actually a very powerful uh, machine. You have not discovered that it is a machine yet, but it is. Uh, sure, you want to do one more? Yeah, sorry. Um, every time you speak, I have another question because it's very fascinating. Thank you for coming. Uh, you mentioned Zeus. Was he real? Zeus was real, yes. Wow. What can you tell me? Which species did he came from? Well, he was from one of the uh, the large. Zeus was a very large being. Also, he was like uh, twelve or fourteen feet tall, 
he and he still is around the that particular alien culture is very high there are six dimensional species and they're godlike uh, of course and they came to help uh they came onto the earth because they were uh trying to defeat a negative energy that was here they were just actually being kind to the planet and helping to protect it in some ways so that is where why they were even here so and it was possible for him to shoot lightning bolts from his hand and things of that nature but we don't know he's in sort of uh their species does not allow anyone around them anymore so we do not know too much about them in at their present because they're they've gone into a, a like a a a, um, a secret society kind of thing where they don't really um, communicate with anyone anymore. I think they have become complete energy beings, to be honest with you. We haven't seen them for at least eight or 900 years. And can you tell me the name of the species? The, the name of the species is, uh, what was they, were they called then? They have changed their name uh, several times because of evolutionary developments their name back then was um vorla vorla the vorlands the vorlands and now i think uh, the most recent thing that we heard was they were the vengeance vengeance interesting does zeus still alive in the same body we have no idea. We haven't seen him for 900 years. Okay. Thank you very much. Very good. Okay. We have a, a persistent question from the chat from Reem44. He wants to know about the crystal skulls and are they being protected for future use? Yes, they have to be protected for future use. There is actually 13 crystal skulls that are powerful. They are controllers of the stargates. Uh, the central the central skull will be the controlling skull it will have the control energy in it and there uh, the 12 stargates are representative of each one of the skulls there are many vortexes that are are protecting the skulls and then energizing them but their time has not yet come to be revealed they're an out of phase in your world that no one can see them they've discovered one of the uh stargates one of the very large ones there's 12 large ones and 52 smaller ones to represent each week of the year um they have discovered a, one of the larger ones and it's they know that it's not in third dimension but the energy that it releases they have discovered it was buried in a um i believe it's either pakistan or syria or one of the the countries over there they're keeping that very secretive it's in the middle east they found it uh they have not been able to bring it back completely into third dimensional phase but they are working trying to work with it and see what it is they really don't know what it is so they they sort of assume that it's alien of course they assume that it's something with uh, interdimensional. They assume many different things and they're doing many different tests on it. But uh, it is the only one of the time uh, the uh, Stargates that has been found, not time machines, but uh, Stargates. OK, and back to the uh, Druid uh, line of questions. Uh, Carol is asking if you can tell us more about Stonehenge and if the Druids still work with it. The druids do not work with it right now. They would only work with it if it was necessary for them to come back and work with it. Now, let me explain what that means. That means that your world is on the brink of destruction and they will come back and activate the machine that will terraform the planet again. 
Amazing. Um, are we caught up on questions? Oh, no, I see another one. Where should we concentrate healing energies on the earth this time, at this time, and which vortices? Um, all vortexes and vortices, if you want to call them that, are important for the energy of this planet right now because it's at a dire need for energy. You remember, Earth has gone through many different great upheavals in the last years since 2012, several blood moons in a row, at, during equinoxes and eclipses, and there's energies that are just running uh, wild on the planet in some ways, the emergence of magic. So all the vortexes and vortices need to be kept up. However, if you want to go to the most important ones, that would be the ones in the Atlantic Oceans, I mean, the Pacific Oceans, I'm sorry, and the ones along the borders of uh, California, made by uh, Mary Magdalene and many others that were helping her, some uh, Jesus, um, Archangel Michael, Gabriel, many of the other ones, but these ones are very strong and need to be uh, continually stabilized or, or are continually stabilized. So those are the ones to send energy to if you want to send energy to any of those. Those are the ones that need it the most because that's where the most volcanic activity and earthquakes are. That's where the greatest need for protection is. Uh, Temple, do you want to go next? Oh, I was just going to say, um, I was wondering what the properties are of the small crystal skulls then, the ones that people make. They're, they have their own properties. They can be intentioned. They are powered by the vortexes as well, if you intention them to be so. Not all of the smaller skulls have energy at all. Um, but if you intention them, they can take on an energy and help you uh, with positivity. And they can be intentioned negatively also. But if you intention them to help you, they can be like crystals or regular stones that were made from, uh, from the earth. Uh, they're... Their natural powers are there, of course, but they will not have any extra powers unless you intention it. But um, if they're made of crystal, of course they'll have their natural crystal energies made in a skull form, which might help them to make it slightly powerful. But uh, intention them and they will become more powerful. Okay, thank you. And uh, Wendy is asking in the YouTube chat, can you comment on the effects of galactic light languages on the healing of planets, opening portals of higher love, and on physical manifestation? Oh, absolutely. Um, light languages are very important at this time. They're very powerful at this time. And let me tell you some of the things that they do. First of all, the personal light, when you're using it in a personal way, light languages are the prayer that you do not know how to pray for yourself. They are the prayers that you send up a prayer in light language and it will pray for you in the way that you need to be prayed it for and lift you up in your prayer life in a, in a greater way because sometimes People just do not know how to pray for themselves. They don't know exactly what direction they're going, what they really need. Prayer language can actually be a helpful guidance to that. And they may not know what they're saying, but the prayer language will lift them into a greater direction, a greater understanding of who they are, a greater energy for uplifting because God has given them that language. Absolutely. If they're using it for healing, the prayer language can use to be uh, to go deeper into the healing areas, to go to the places where no one knows that healing is necessary. 
into maybe the nerves or the blood vessels or the, the muscle areas that you may not know. You may know there's pain there. You may know that there's a problem there. You may know that there's a disease there. But when you're using a light language for healing, it gets into the greater um, uh, preciseness of what is being uh, done there and praise just exactly for the needs that are uh, the needs that are needed to be healed. So your light language will be that specific healing energy that will help make that healing even stronger. For talking to aliens, of course, light languages and galactic languages will help you to communicate with other species and bring friendly thoughts and ideas from different realms to you and may also give you energies that to help you uh, open up your third eye, to help you to be able to channel better, to be able to use the abilities of the brain better, to open up the areas of the brain for bilocation, for for other things of that nature. So yes, light languages can be used in many, many, many ways. All right, um, we have another question from the chat. Carol Lucy Lorty would like to know if she is uh, a reincarnated Druid and uh, would like to know if Tesla was involved with the Druids. One moment, please. Let me attach to her energy first. Oh, there she is. Yes, you do have some Druid in you. There's no question about that. And magic is something that is uh, easy for you and uh, will come naturally to you when it's more powerful on the earth. Um, Tesla was not part of the Druid species. He uh, was born a few times on earth, but uh, was not in that era. He, he is ancient but he was not part of the Druids. There were others very similar to his thought process that were around at that time, but it was not the actual Tesla energy. All right, our time is starting to run short. Um, I'm thinking maybe uh, a final blessing would be appropriate about now. Would you do like you to share with us? Or do you want me to give a final blessing? Would you like to share a blessing with us? We do pray all the time here in the Council of Wonders, if you call us that. Um, we do have many prayers that we send to your earth. And I think one of the ones that we do most often is this one. One moment. Dear God, great being of energy, light, beauty, and understanding, wisdom, comfort, peace, come to this planet and bring all that you, all of your benefits to it. Bring all that you have in energy to it for to keep it alive and to keep it safe. There is so much negativity that is around it and would want to harm it that we ask that you be here in greater amounts every day to just stabilize and commit the light energies to positivity. Help those that are working in missions to be greater and understand what they are to do. Help those that are loving and kind to maintain their love and kindness, for the world needs it more now than ever before. Help those that are a guidance and a leadership. Stand up tall and be brave. Let them not falter. Let them not be meek. Let them not shy away from their missions. But to stand in the face of adversity when needed. Thank you, Lord God, for all these things and for so many other things that we know that are necessary for you to do. All things through thee 
can be done and all things through thee are necessary to be done at this time be with us now help our missions as well to be successful and to raise the energies and light processes of this planet help us to know what missions are the most important so that we may go there and do those things at the appropriate times. Thank you for all those that help us and all energies that you give to us. We praise and thank you for all the success that we have encountered. We praise and thank you for all those that you have brought to us for help. Thank you so much for everything that you do and your wisdom is beyond what we can possibly imagine. So continue your high ways and high thoughts and help us to understand which way to turn. Amen. Amen. That was a very beautiful blessing. Thank you. I just want to relay, there are many in the chats who are expressing appreciation for your sharings and uh, knowledge and uh, uh, hopes that you will return to speak to us again. Are you willing? I am Helia. I am willing to come back if you so desire. Call me by name and I will come. Thank you so very much. Yes, the Council of Wonders is very busy, but times like these to spread information to your peoples is a time of positivity in our thought process. So to give you an understandings of things is good work for us. And we thank you for your appreciation, but we do not need it. We just need your help in praying for your world so that it may continue. It is necessary for this timeline and this planet to move forward in a way that has not yet been understood or believed. We give you great love and we give you great blessings and we pray for you constantly. Thank you so very much. Much love to you and good day. Good day. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome, Grindel. Yeah. I couldn't. You didn't give me very much time. I'm sorry. You had a tough act to follow. I'm, I'm looking at the weather outside, and it's not looking good for you, for this area. But I'm just here to say hello. Someone expressed that they haven't seen me for a while. Well, here I am. Um, and um, I love it that you remember me because... <laughs> I am um, I am remembering you every day, and I work with a lot of you. You know that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, somebody had a question. But I don't have much time, so ask it fast. I have a question. Yeah. Not a question, it's just I want to give you another hug. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh. I love you so much. Oh, goosey goo. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Um, yeah, I love it. Yeah. Um, uh, who, who called Grindel? I don't remember. Uh, I, I did, actually, but uh, I had asked uh, Helia about the Saurians on Earth. Yeah, the Saurians, yeah. I was just wondering if you could comment a little bit more on their presence on Earth. And, like, they've been here for a very long time. I know that. but uh... Yeah, they've been here a long time. Um, they're, they're now starting to reveal themselves again. Yeah, through this woman. Um, uh, people are afraid of her, though. You have to understand that. She has to be a little bit a, a different in her approach sometimes. She does have that reptilian attitude sometimes. So um, 
Tell her to just lighten up just a touch, and her message will get across much better. Okay. Yeah, she needs to just lighten up and not be so dra no so reptilian about it. Um, I, you know, like me, I bring a little touch of humor so I don't frighten people off. So you know, so you know, um, it. She just has to have a little bit more rapport. Yeah, <laughs> but I love her. She's a sweetheart. I like her. Can you I comment, really do? Can you comment a little bit on um, the eye? Sometimes uh, saurians can uh, shape shift the eye. Can you talk about like how much DNA, reptilian DNA, they would need to be able to do that? About thirty percent. Okay. Uh, at least thirty percent. You're you're not gonna see anybody with reptilian features unless they have about. Uh, starting to be around 30 percent uh, because it's all blended through the hybridization process which blends it out of looking reptilian but if you have like 30 percent then you start bringing it back into that uh, percentage where you can get the eye and the hands and the and the little ridges and things of that nature and and even a little start of a tail don't ask her. Yeah, I don't want to know. But anyway, um, uh, it is that it is. So, all right. I guess they're gonna tell me to leave, aren't they? We've got one yeah, last question. If you can squeeze it in, Steve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, real quick. So this is my uh, this is my son. He's six years old. Apparently, he's been the crocodile variation. Yeah. Of I'll tell you. Hi there. Yeah, hi. Mm -hmm. Say hi, Grendel. Hi, Grendel. But he, hey, he's a, how's it going? Hey, I can see that in him a little bit. You know that I already do. Yeah. Yeah, he's he's the, he's a reptilian you can go party with, but he's a lot of fun. But yeah, yeah he, he's he, cool. He, cool. I we just want to know like um, where the the crocodile variation of reptilian comes from, and maybe what their specializations are as a culture. Well, it's It's we just call it reptilian. I'm more like the crocodile. The Eli, uh, the Elias Sean Dizendi has a little bit of that in too. But I'm a zespoid, and we're we're the closest. Man, eh, well, not man. Eh, maybe there's another one that's actually close too. But we're we're one of the closer ones to the crocodile species. So yeah. just to let you know. Okay. Yeah. So we're the more fun species. Yeah. So yeah. Excellent. <laughs> Very Excellent. good. What's his name? Alex. Alex. Yeah. Cool, man. Cool. Yeah. He's showing off for you right now. <laughs> Very good. Oh, yeah. Are you kidding? We love to show off. That's one of our greatest traits. Yeah. Uh, thank you, sir. <laughs> Otherwise, we wouldn't get a mate. You don't show off, you don't get a mate. All right. That's it. All right. Have a good day. Thank you. I guys. guess I got to go. Thank you, Brandon. <laughs> Have a great day. Yeah. <laughs> Bye. Thank you, Grindel. You have a great one. <laughs> yeah. Bye, yeah. Bye, Grindel. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. All right, I'm I'm leaving. Hello. Welcome back. Hello. Hello. That Ooh. was an amazing webinar. Oh, Ooh. I'm actually that one was very interesting. Yeah. Alrighty. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Don't forget the uh, all the different announcements. Go ahead and do it, your announcements again. Will Will's announcements are coming here. <laughs> Awakening Angel class at uh, 4 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Central. Email me, ReikiWithWill at gmail.com. And we're doing a white magic class April 29th, Sunday, April 29th at 3 p.m. Eastern, 
again, email me, reikiwithwill at gmail.com. Okay. $111 for each class. One, one, one. Very, very, very cool. All right, don't forget the book is out. I know a lot of you have already bought it, haven't you? Um, yep. It's interesting. Thanks. Thank you. I appreciate that. Any uh, final blessings before we go off air? Any final blessings? Oh, Barbara wants to do a final blessing. All right. Thank you for your listening ears and your opened eyes, your visionary thought processes. You are part of who we are. We are giving you energy to do your missions. Of course, God will do that as well. But we pray for your success every day. We love you and hope that you are ready for the fight. Much love to you. Many blessings. All right. Anybody else? I can give a blessing. Go. Okay. Yes. Da hukia na shitia po, na dialu oto shokiata, na hiana iku tia kit hiana kulu oto baya, na lua baya no to iko nata yato, da yana tikia nata, ishiki, monia to bia hohlea hona ya hiata, tia ko bia no li bia shutiana, na motiata, kanania to tiana, na na no biata, namaste. Pure light be with you in love and the energies of the, the great God. Let him know that you are with him and bring him into you always. We are with you as well and bring you good tidings of love. We are energies that you can use as well, but our light is not as blinding as the light of God. Let him be your pathway. Let him light your way. And know that there are things within you that are greater than you can possibly imagine. Rise up. This is your time. All right. Well, I want to thank everybody for watching Hukalo TV, and uh, we will now go off the air. Bye. Bye, everyone. Thanks for joining. Bye, Jim. Bye, Bye everyone. Thank Bye. you. Bye-bye. Thanks. See you later. Alligator. You Alligator. <laughs>